we'll start with few representative cases. Again, it's a 40-year-old male had multiple uh, uh, procedures for recurrent vitreous hemorrhage secondary to diabetic proliferative retinopathy. When he reported us with again further recurrence. So both mic. Reported to us is not a thing. Uh, yeah, no. yeah. Now it's okay. Thank you. Reported to us again with a further dense vitreous hemorrhage. So um, there was no fundus view. Ultrasonography shows inferior detachment. UVM shows clear tummy site proliferation here. What you could see after clearing hemorrhage, we saw huge proliferation at the sclerotomy and similar thing had all around three sclerotomies and also anti halide proliferation. Between this proliferation, uh, did additional laser along the uh, peripheral retina and also on a fast plana. After trimming, this bleeders were cauterized. Silicon oil also was injected subsequently. He had a silicon oil removal one year later and uh, after eight years of follow up, he is maintaining 636 vision. Clear vitreous cavity, though pressure was 6 millimeter, but there is no further recurrences. Another case has uneventful 23 gauge vitrectomy with an additional laser. Had a mild to moderate vitreous hemorrhage on first post of day, uh, which persisted on sixth day. Ultrasonography revealed attached 89. We decided to observe at six weeks, he had 6 9 vision with a clear vitreous cavity. Another scenario, whether we had recurrent episodes of vitreous hemorrhage secondary to inferior temporal branch vein occlusion. This was a sectoral laser eye. Underwent vitreous tummy combined with cataract extraction with IOL implantation. And post up day 1 and 7, he had dispersed vitreous hemorrhage. There was no fundus view, but retina was attached on ultrasound. So we decided to observe. He came back after 2 months, still had a persistent vitreous hemorrhage. No view of the fundus, but retina was still attached on ultrasonography. There was no rubiosis. No angle near vascularization, UBM shows heal sclerotomies, no fibrovascular proliferation at sclerotomy or antihalate fibrovascular proliferation. Then we decided to again, we thought we'll observe him further because other eye was fairly good. And at five months follow post surgery, he had 6 9 vision clear with risk cavity. This was a fundus picture at five, five months post op with no intervention. This another eye had uneventful vitrectomy, had a good recovery of the vision, but six weeks following surgery, he reported back with a sudden loss of vision due to dense vitreous hemorrhage and had a high intraocular pressure. Here ultrasonography revealed few vitreous sequels, but retina was attached, but what you see on UBM here as a both things uh, vitreous incarceration and sclerotomy site and had a doubtful fibrovascular polypression. Because of that, we decided not to observe. We did outpatient fluid air exchange along with anti-retinal cryopexy. And at four months, he had 6.15 and 6 vision with a clear media, no further recurrences. These are few different scenarios which I described this one and partly we managed. So basically, persistent or recurrent vitreous hemorrhage is the commonest complication following vitrectomy for vascular retinopathy. It can be either immediate post-operative period or can occur few weeks or months later. Mild form of hemorrhage is very common in early post-operative period. The source could be residual fibrovascular tissue over the retina, have dispersal from a peripheral uncut gel. You have dissolution of pre-retinal clot which was left behind what we discussed previously at the end of surgery or can have sudden hypotony or persistent hypotony in a post early post-operative period, particularly with MIVS and leaking sclerotomy of leave behind, and we know there is a high incidence of hypotony because of that. And if there is a post-operative rise in blood pressure, that can be another cause. This early post-operative period generally resolves spontaneously over days or weeks and does not generally does not affect long-term visual outcome. However, severe cases sometimes may need intervention. Fakic eyes generally have higher incidence of hemorrhage and they resolve more slowly compared to fakic eye. Again, higher incidence probably because we cannot do that, that good vitrectomy in fakic eyes because you are worried about retaining the lens and avoiding damage to the lens. Coming to the less vitreous hemorrhage, the incidence is somewhere around 20 to 35 percent. Prognosis is generally more guarded. The source could be persistent or recurrent near vascular proliferation along the retinal surface or residual or left or posterior hyaloid or left or residual fibrovascular stumps or having a proliferation at the sclerotomy site and anterior hyaloid proliferation, what you saw, the first case showing uh, extensive proliferation. Uh, workup includes reviewing the post uh, past surgical record for any residual fibrovascular proliferations. 
Rapid onset of proviosis and low IOP is early signs of again anti highlight fibrovascular proliferation. Look for, please do a B scan, particularly look for associated additional post segment problems. UVM, to look, to look for fibrovascular proliferation at the sclerotomy site and anti highlight fibrovascular proliferation. And it's important to assess systemic status, particularly recent change in a medication, uh, systemic medication, and that sometimes also can precipitate these hemorrhages. Treatment options we would have here is observation with restricted physical activity or can have OPT fluid air exchange. We can have antiretinal cryopexy with additional laser at a later uh, <coughs> sitting or vitreous lavage or vitrectomy. The choice and timing of the treatment dip depends on urgency of visual rehabilitation, re associated retinal status, presence of erythroplastic glaucoma, and again if there is a reproliferation or not. Outpatient fluid air exchange generally helps to avoid basically it's a minor procedure you can do in outpatient. Helps to, to clear the media to certain extent and you can let us once it's clear a little bit you can add some, add some additional laser and basically helps to avoid major surgical intervention. And you can sometimes add anteretinal cryopexy along with at the same sitting. However, it is not an option I use with persistence or recurrent proliferation. Revitrectomy has a major advantage because you can, uh, you can remove the vitreous hemorrhage. At the same time, you can tackle associated uh, pathologies if you are dealing with additional proliferation or having associated detachment that can be taken care of at the same sitting. How you prevent, rather minimize the incidence, as I would put that way, uh, it's important in a preoperative phase before uh, taking patient for surgery, it's important to control systemic hypertension control renal disease. If patient is on dialysis, prefer to have heparin-free dialysis the, uh, the day prior to the vitrectomy. Uh, attention to bleeding disorder is equally important. The, generally, it is acceptable now that there is no need to stop anticoagulants or antiplatelet drugs in these eyes. And obviously, you can have intravitreal uh, avastin, particularly if you have very severe proliferation, it eases your membrane dissections. Intraoperatively, meticulous removal of the vitreous and post highlight is very, very important. We need to have do de good debulking of vitreous and sclerotomies. We need a complete removal of all fibrovascular tissue. Please do not leave any stumps behind as far as possible. We need to have a meticulous control of intra bleeding and additional or adequate retinal ablation to untreated retina and post to sclerotomy sites. And again, it was important here to control of intraoperatively systemic hypertension you have to deal with. We just had a question about what is the role of intraoperative avastin at the end of surgery. We all know that it helps to uh, regress new vessels or prevent promotion of new vessels but it is unlikely to prevent early postoperative bleeding from vessels that are injured mechanically during the surgery. In fact, the use of anti vegf at the end of surgery might even delay the repairing process of these injured blood vessels and potentially induce more recurrent vitreous hemorrhage during early post-operative period. We have enough articles now supporting that uh, intravitreal levastin at the end of surgery probably does not help in prevent early post-operative vitreous hemorrhage. We have uh, our article published use of ultrasound biomicroscopy, assessing sclerotomy location in eyes where had recurrent vitreous hemorrhage following uh, vitrectomy for diabetic retinopathy. We conclude that fibrovascular operations seem, seem to originate from the sclerotomy sites, have eyes with re-bleed and a no fibrovascular operation at sclerotomy, UBM did, did well with outpatient fluid air exchange and observation and those with FVP and those with Generally, generally required. Just to conclude, just a sort of treatment plan, what we follow is uh, when you have a recurrent vitreous hemorrhage, if it is a mild, have a view of the fundus, you can observe. If you see obvious proliferation, you can do laser. Where there is no view, you can do ultrasound. And there are two situations here, you have attached retina or detached retina. If detached retina, obviously you straight forward take patient for re-surgery. But if you have attached retina, then you ask for UBM. If there is anterohyaloid proliferation or proliferation at sclerotomy, again these eyes will need weight lavage or revitrectomy. But if ultra UBM shows healed sclerotomy, there is no proliferation, probably you can observe or do anteretinal cryopexy or outpatient OPD procedure in these eyes. The take home message would be the early postoperative hemorrhage is fairly common but has a good prognosis. Late hemorrhages require good evaluation and probably extensive surgical maneuvers. UBM is a useful tool while planning management in these eyes. There is no substitute for meticulous surgery and adequate retinal ablation in terms of long-term visual outcome. 
and also taking care of systemic uh, status as well. Thank, thank you very much for appreciating.